Gretkin? Here. Moore? Here. Shainer? Scott? Here. Waters? Stand for a moment of silence, Here. followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mary and Brendan, meet me at the mic there if you would. Proclamation that reads for over 50 years, community health centers have provided high quality, affordable, comprehensive, primary, and preventable health care, preventive health care in the nation's underserved communities, delivering value to and having a significant impact on America's health care system. And as the country's largest primary care network, health centers now serve as a health care home for over 30 million Americans in over 14,000 delivery sites across the nation. One in every 12 people in the United States gets their care in a, in a community health service center. Whereas everyday health centers are developing new approaches to integrating a wide range of services beyond primary care, including oral health, vision, behavioral health, and pharmacy services to meet the needs and challenges of their community. And to the Siouxland Community Health Center is a critical economic engine helping to power the local economy by generating millions of dollars in combined economic impact and job creation. Health centers save the entire health system billions of dollars annually by managing chronic conditions and keeping patients out of costlier health care settings like hospitals, emergency rooms. And whereas the National Health Center Week offers the opportunity to recognize America's health centers, their dedicated staff, board members, and all, the and all those responsible for their continued success and growth. Now, I, Robert E. Scott, Mayor of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, on behalf of City Council, do hereby proclaim August 9th through the 15th, 2020, as National Health Center Week, and expend, extend our appreciation to the Siouxland Community Health Center for its years of dedicated service to the people of Siouxland. I'd like to present this to you, say a few words, and we just want you to know how much we appreciate you and the community and all you do to make it a better community. So thank you. Say a few words. Thank you, Mayor Scott, and thank you, members of the City Council. We appreciate the support that you have given us in living our mission in this community. The Community Health Center uh, was founded 29 years ago, and our history has been one of rapid growth. This past year, we had an 8% increase in the number of patients that we served, serving over 31,000 people in this community. And since the COVID pandemic started five months ago, we have been honored to serve as the testing site uh, for COVID testing in this community. And we have administered 13,000 PCR tests for COVID uh, in this community in the last five months. Our role has greatly expanded as the number of people in our community who have lost their jobs to COVID and have lost their insurance are seeking services at the health center as well. So on behalf of a very passionate, dedicated team that comes to work every day to serve this community, we thank you for this proclamation. We thank you for your support, and we look forward to another year of serving the Siouxland community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. We'll go on to items 3 through 12, which is the consent agenda, considered to pass unanimously. If you're... Oh, I'm sorry, we have an interview. Sorry about that. Sonia Fitch. Sonia, Sonia are, are you on here? the line? Oh, okay. Hey, yes, Sonia. You yes, you're alive with the City Council, so please go ahead and state your name and address for the record, and then the Council may have okay. some questions. Okay, all right. Uh, this is Sonia Finch, S-O-N-Y-A-F-I-N-C-H, and my address is 402 Homestead Lane in Sergeant Bluff. Sonia, why do you want to serve on the airport board of trustees? Hi, yes. Um, I'm, I'm interested, uh, just to give you a little background of myself, I'm in the military. I've been in the service for 27 years. Uh, I was previously a helicopter pilot for the Army. Uh, I flew both Apaches and Kiowas. 
and then I had an opportunity to go to the Air National Guard. So I have been flying tankers uh, since 2006, um, and for the last six years, uh, I went to Des Moines to work with the 132nd at the airport uh, to convert the f to the unmanned platform. Um, I returned back to Sioux City this past January, uh, and now I'm uh, the commander overseeing uh, the engineering squadron and the security forces and all of the base support systems here at the 185th. And um, so I really felt like it made sense to join the council based on my background and obviously interest in uh, being a pilot for the last 20 years in military service. And then now especially that I have oversight uh, to uh, multiple organizations that work directly with the board. Um, I feel like it makes sense and there's a connection there for me obviously with both my interest in aviation and then also with my um, current oversight for all the support functions from the base. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a strong connection and a strong, I mean, I see a strong need to continue to work with the airport um, from my full-time side as well, and then also from my personal interest to help uh, with the airport board. Okay, questions? I think you'd be an excellent addition to that board. This is Dan Moore talking with you, and I appreciate your making application. I noticed there are two positions that are vacant on the board right now, and it is a gender-balanced uh, board, and so I appreciate that you've made the application, and, and I look favorably upon it, just so you know. Well, thank you. Any other questions? No. <clears throat> thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions or? No other questions, thank you. Okay, all right, well terrific, thank you very much. If you wanna speak on an agenda item, please come up as I read. If you wanna speak on an item not on the agenda, please come up under citizen concerns. You'll be limited to three minutes. Uh, if you're listening on uh, YouTube or on uh, TV, the phone number to call in if you have a question is 224-4996. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Reading of the City Council minutes of August 3rd, 2020. Four is a resolution temporary closing a section of Floyd Boulevard and Jefferson Street on October 1st for the North High Homecoming Parade. Five, a resolution adopting plans and spec for the Lindenwood Street Storm Sewer Project. Six is a resolution amending the position classification manual and salary schedule by adding IT security coordinator in the WCICC department. Seven is a resolution approving an offer to buy an acceptance agreement with Riverfront Properties for 506 South Floyd Boulevard for the Chris Larson Park Riverside Development Project. Eight are actions relating to grants. A is a resolution approving a grant agreement with the IFA for Emergency Solutions Grant Coronavirus Funds. B is the resolution. Mayor, yep. could I just ask Jill a couple questions? I'm, I'm just, I, I wanted to thank you and certainly all your coworkers in neighborhood services for all that you're doing, especially for the homeless. And I see uh, it looks like this funding will help uh, in, in uh, helping to house the homeless. I'm just curious from your perspective, and I know all the work that you and Darlene and Amy are doing and, and the other new lady that I can't Clara. think of. Yeah. Clara, yeah. Um, I'm curious, I think you said, f were there 45 homeless individuals that were housed in apartments and then another 46? That's 91 if my math is right. How many more homeless do you think we have that, how, how, uh, Jill Wanderscheid, Neighborhood Services Manager. Um, from talking to Clara and Darlin, one of the things that they're seeing are new, new people that have not been homeless previously that have fallen on hard times. Maybe they've um, been staying with relatives or whatever and with the uh, coronavirus coming that they've now become homeless. So it's kind of a moving target number. I'm, I might not, I'm probably not the best person to answer that question, but more than what we've seen previously. Previously. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the housing, what other services are we providing? Um, so HUD um, 
states that we have to follow a housing first model. So our goal is to get them housed and then the wraparound services to ensure that they're successful as they're housed. Um, so we um, connect them with all sorts of services that they may need to be successful. We help them find jobs if that's the case. We help them come up with payment plans to pay down fines, um, those kinds of things, really just anything to kind of get back into um, you know, living on their own and being able to be successful doing that. But what we're doing really is pretty important and very helpful to those individuals. Yes, we think, um, especially with the complications of the coronavirus, that being able to house people in scattered apartments throughout the city has been a great thing. And we, um, not only this funding, but we're anticipating um, several hundred thousand from the federal government that's still coming. And we're gonna expand those services and um, try to house as many people as Terrific. possible. Terrific. Yeah, again, thanks for all you're doing. Yes, and I, I do have to say, Darlin and Clara and Amy as well, but you see Darlin outside quite a yep. bit. Um, uh, working with, with everyone, it's a tough job to, to break down those barriers to get them housed. So they're, Darlin, Clara in particular, and also Amy have done a phenomenal job getting yeah. people housed over the last several I'm, months. I'm sure you're right, and please tell them thank you for the council. For sure, we will do. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. B is a resolution authorizing fire rescue to accept a grant from the Iowa State Fire Marshal Division for a fire work storage cabinet and public service announcements. C is a resolution authorizing fire rescue to accept a working here fund grant from Farm Credit Services for wildlife fire safety equipment. D is a resolution authorizing the fire department to apply for a grant from the Department of Homeland Security for sprinklers and fire alarm systems. E is a resolution approving a grant agreement from the FAA for the Taxi A reconstruction project at the airport. F is a resolution authorizing Parks and Rec to submit a grant application to the IDNR for the Chris Larson Park Riverfront Development Project. Nine are actions relating to agreements and contract. A is a resolution approving a donation and construction agreement with Kick It Forward for a mini pitch system at Leaf Erickson Park. B is a resolution approving a license and naming agreement with Tyson Fresh Meats for the naming rights at the IBP Ice Center. C is a, a question about that. Go ahead. It was just in relation to how long that naming license was going to be for. Is that pretty standard of being a 20 year time period for that amount of money, Matt, or anyone else that's dealt with that? I meant to send emails on these items, so I apologize. Matt Salvatore, Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, the previous agreement was roughly 20 years, and with uh, the payments usually coming up at the front end of the agreement, they tend to be a little bit longer. So I'd say this is within reason. Okay, it just seems like 20 years is <laughs> 20 years. Okay, thanks. CIA's resolution approving the agreement with Pictometry International for Aerial Photography Services. This agreement is through 2024. Nobody's here, of course, from that department. Um, I want them, I, I don't know. It's amazing that you can sit on this council for eight years and never get to vote on one of these contracts because the staff never looks at them until it's too late to go get somebody else. And it, I've relayed this to Bob. It's upsetting to me that this, if, if we had to do this, why it doesn't come to us before now. And I don't believe that are the only people in the United States that are doing this. I, I, I hate to tell you that. I find that terribly hard to believe. Mayor and Council, they, they're, they're not the only yeah. firm. In 2014, uh, the council voted at that time and a decision was made to do aerial photography with pictometry. Um, as it ties in with our ESRI system and Beacon Schneider, which is the assessor's office. It was a joint decision between the county assessor, the city assessor, and the city. Um, and so the last two flyovers have been done by pictometry and utilized pictometry's uh, data files and software in discussions with WIC. Um, continuity of, of the data is important, and based on that, they'd recommend that we continue with pictometry so that we have consistent uh, flyovers and consistent data. They should have told us that when they were renewing it the last time is all I'm saying. Now it comes and you have no option but to vote for this today. That's what, you, you force the council's hands. That's not the way, you know, and 
you can be mad at the city assessor, county assessor, or engineering department. I don't care. It's just not right that it, it comes to us this way. What, forcing us to do this is not the right way to do business, in my opinion, but it happens all the time, so I guess I should shut up and move on, but I'm, I'm going to vote no because of that, so... No, you're, I, you weren't alone. I just I didn't understand why it wasn't out to bid either or why we weren't looking at other companies. And it's a little scary. I mean, I understand the continuity and wanting to continue with a program, but I also worry what could be better out there if we're not going to start looking at other companies and now we're locked in with a company for a decade more. All right, D is a resolution approving a contract with Nelson Commercial Construction for the annual sidewalk program. Mayor, are you requesting to pull that for a separate roll call vote, the last item? I just, well, I don't care. You can do a roll call vote. I'm just voting no. I, okay, then we'll need to do a separate vote. All right, then roll call vote on number C then, 9C. Moore? Aye. Scott? No. Waters? Aye. Redkin? Aye. E is a resolution approving a contract with Christensen Construction in the amount of $6,794,230 for the Grandview Park Tank Replacement Project. Tanner Purchasings. A is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Sandry Fire Supply for stabilization strut equipment. B is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Foster Coach Sales for ambulances and power load cot, mount, cot mounts. C is a resolution awarding a purchase order to Striker Sales for power cots. Stair pros and cardiac monitors. Eleven are applications for beer and liquor license. See the list come forward if you have any questions. Twelve is receipt of minutes. See the list come forward if you have any questions. Anyone to be heard on any of those items, please come forward now. Mayor, can I make a point point of order for the record on uh, 10B? There is a um, one of the equipment numbers is incorrect. 91165 should be 1169, and the year of that unit is incorrect as well. It says it's a 2010 when it's actually a 2012. Okay. Call the roll, please. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Gretkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. I like that. Fireworks. Mr. Moore, give your little presentation, please. Fireworks. Item 13. You all have the uh, homework? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, what I prepared was the uh, Municipal Code Chapter 19.20 Fireworks governs the sale, use, or exploding of fireworks within the city, and I attached 19.20 to the materials for your uh, reading and understanding how our ordinance works. I know you all know that, but it's always good to just review it and do an overall review. And that's what I intend today by this presentation is to have a presentation and general discussion. No decisions will be made. No, no action is before the mayor and, and the city council on this. Um, the state code uh, contains definitions of consumer fireworks as does Iowa Code Section 100.19. In particular, they make a distinction between first-class consumer fireworks, which I've listed one through nine. That's right out of the state code. It's important just to know that what types of fireworks we're talking about, such as aerial shell kits and reloadable tubes, chasers, helicopter and aerial spinners, firecrackers, mine and shell devices, missile-type rockets, Roman candles, sky rockets, and bottle rockets and multiple tube devices. Um, then there's a second class consumer fireworks definition or section that includes cone fountains, uh, litter sparklers, and, and the list just is, is there uh, as second class consumer fireworks. As you all know, the sale of fireworks is governed by state law, whereas the use and exploding of fireworks is governed by the city. I've listed Couple of different options just for discussion purposes, just to try to get the ideas flowing of how we can do better uh, for the July 3rd and July 4th celebration, as well as the December 31st celebration and use of fireworks. 
First option, ban the use and discharge of fireworks altogether. Eliminate the dates and hours of July 3rd through July 4th from the hours of 1 p.m. until 11 p.m. and December 31 from the hours of 1 p.m. until 12.30 a.m. on the 1st of January. The enforcement will be a challenge. We need to lobby. If, if we go that route, or if there's support for the ban, complete ban, we would uh, want to consider lobbying the state legislators to ban the sale of fireworks, um, protect citizens with medical conditions, including veterans of the war suffering from PTSD and citizens with autism. Also, fireworks can scare people, including the elderly who are at risk for heart attacks. And we would want to make Sioux City a veteran-friendly city, one of peace and respect. Again, just ideas to get the ideas flowing. Um, protect citizens in general. Noise can disrupt neighbors, including babies and toddlers that can be frightened, anxious, and sleepless. Protect the pets and other animals, including wildlife. Reduce the risk of damage to personal and public property, including fire risk. Reduce the litter and trash left behind from fireworks. Remains and trash does not stay defined to personal property and invade others' property. Reduce the damage to the environment. Fireworks can create a problem with smoke, which reduces air quality. Fireworks can also be made of charcoal, sulfur fuel, potassium nitrate, and percolates. Reduce the likelihood of injury. And then I've cited the major safety organization recommends not to use fireworks at home, and that's listed there. That's one option. Another option is to limit the use or discharge of fireworks. Um, in other words, the types of fireworks that we allow to be discharged within the city limits. Continue to allow or permit fireworks as currently provided by the city ordinance, but ban certain consumer fireworks that create louder explosions than a certain standard that would be determined. Not sure what that standard would be set at for explosions and for the noise level, but it would be one that could be discussed. Um, enforcement would still be an issue. Consider adding a permit requirement that may include getting signatures from neighbors. Decrease the amount of time fireworks can be sold. Uh, again, that would take going to the state legislature for a change in the state law. Decrease the hours that fireworks can be discharged or designate certain areas in the city where fireworks can be used or discharged. I point out that Sioux Falls, South Dakota prohibits the use of fireworks within the city limits with the exception of sparklers, snakes, and other fireworks that do not have an audible report, projectile, or launching component. I wasn't sure what audible report was, so I included a page in your materials that defines just that, which basically it's the uh, powder content that's contained in fireworks. A uh, third option would be to maintain the status quo, continue to allow or permit fireworks as, as currently provided by the city ordinance. Which you'll recall for a three year period, I think the first year, the council generously said, I think it was a 10 day period, I believe. Was, is that what right. you recall? I think, right. I think it was for 10 days, which was just, it was just too long. It was, it was way too long because people were starting to discharge fireworks the week or two weeks before that, and then it went for a week or two afterwards. So um, I think we have a reasonable ordinance with the two days if, if everybody would just pull together and and uh, do their fireworks on July 3rd and July 4th. Um, we could um, increase the fine or penalty for violating city ordinance. Enforcement would continue to be an issue and citizen complaints would continue. Um, the reason why I asked the mayor and the council to revisit this is because we probably have had more complaints, I believe, at least it appears to me, we've had more complaints this year than we've had in the past three years. And when I first came to Sioux City and made this my home, uh, the sale of fireworks in the state of Iowa were illegal. And uh, I was surprised at the number of fireworks that were still being uh, discharged and used over the 4th of July holiday. Um, but that was probably an enforcement back 43 years ago when I first came to Sioux City, and, and it, it's a continual problem. And I think the police department and the uh, fire department would be uh, concerned about that year in and, and year out. So Mayor, that's, and, and Pete and Alex, that's, I just wanted to give you the background of what our fireworks ordinance is, what we have before us, some options that might be available. I'm not advocating for any one of the three options, or there might even be a fourth option. I simply wanted to gauge the community because 
uh, people are upset and we need to uh, take a hard look at this. So that completes my report, Mayor. You can limit the amount of gunpowder in these fireworks? I don't. That's one of the things I thought you said. Is that possible? Well, that, that, doesn't the state set that? And I'm state sure has the level, but it, but the state doesn't set the days. I mean, you can ban fireworks totally. I just wonder if you can ban or or limit the amount of of the powder of the powder. But, but one thing that I read in here was that Iowa adopted this same uh, level of fireworks at South Dakota. Yeah, approved. That's true. So yeah, the fire marshal it, I think sent us an email. On yeah, that. if they don't get it here. They don't have to travel far to get it. Right, and in different municipalities, what D Councilman Moore had indicated was it's really, you're seeing a, a distinction between sparklers and snakes and things like that, or the loud booming type fireworks. I haven't seen jurisdictions that have limited based on the content explosiveness, but I suppose that's a possibility. I'm just not sure about enforcement. Well, enforcement is the big key in my mind. <clears throat> Uh, for the entire length of my career on the police department, fireworks were not legal to possess, nor were they um, permitted to uh, discharge them, other than I think pretty close to the same um, sparklers and snakes and, and that um, information that you provided, Dan. So it, it didn't stop people from doing it, and they weren't available here in Iowa. And now that they are, it makes it much more convenient for people to purchase. Um, I know it's, uh, from the emails we received today, I know it's a big uh, financial uh, boom for those in the fireworks business. And uh, they stress the uh, economic impact to the community. But, but clearly, for as long as I can remember, this past summer was certainly right at the top of the list for the number of complaints. I believe the journal had it in the paper that there's an 80% increase in complaints this year over last year. Um, and that real problem is the enforcement without a witness. And most people in neighborhoods probably have a pretty good idea who's discharging them. But without a witness, and uh, you, it's uh, impossible to issue a citation. Uh, so enforcement never will be a big factor, I don't believe. I Unless see where a disorderly house. Well, that's a possibility. Get under not a disorderly house. I don't care who's lighting them. It's your house. You're responsible. That's what happens. You can have a teenage party and not be home, and you're going to get the ticket because you're responsible for that house. I don't see any different than that. I know we're going to go to court on it. I know somebody's going to challenge it probably. But I don't see any different than that than what you have if you've got a teenage well, party going on or you've got other illegal activities, drugs or whatever. Somebody gets a ticket for that. Somebody it, goes to jail. It seems to me that you have the same problem, though, that we have with the fireworks now because in the frequenting disorderly houses, uh, our house code, uh, you're going to find minors in possession of alcohol. You're going to find minors in possession of drugs or you won't, you won't charge them accordingly. Uh, and so you need to have but you can also witnesses and you need to have evidence or there's... You can also charge the homeowner. Well, I don't know if, that's a, if there's a civil way to do that versus a criminal violation, but the criminal violation is, you know, you got that proof beyond a reasonable doubt standard. We're talking 95% sure somebody did something. You, we've been researching this a little bit as to whether or not you could charge it to the homeowner or the property owner. More than likely, it would be a civil type of charge, municipal infraction. Uh, the standard of proof would be a little bit different. Um, we would be looking just straight at the property owner as long as you could prove that there was discharge that was happening on the property. Um, out front and watch and blow them up in the backyard. Yeah. It's not hard. Yeah. No, I agree. It's Which not. is different because it's a criminal violation right now for discharge outside of the times that are permitted. And the fine is set under the state code, a minimum of 250 per violation, I believe. But almost always what happens, of course, is the complaints come in after the fireworks have been discharged. And 
by the time the police get out there. Let me tell you, in my neighborhood, they were going on for hours. <laughs> and I'm, not, I don't, I'm one of those guys that doesn't care. It doesn't make any difference to me. But i got to believe that some of my neighbors probably don't like it. But for me, I, I'm not going to get into a neighborhood dispute over it. It's just... I, I, mean, I think that's exactly... I live with it, but it, I'm telling you, it went on in our neighborhood. Yep. Three weeks before... No, I, I would agree. July. And I, and I think that's what happens in the neighborhoods with uh, fireworks and a lot of other simple misdemeanors. The neighbors, the police can come in, but they get to go home at night somewhere else and they're not in that neighborhood. What happens for the neighbors and why they are reluctant to step forward is because they have to live there. And, and they don't, they want to be able to, you know, well, think along be, and get let's along. Let's be realistic. I'm not... I'm not anti-police, and it's going to sound that way, but let's be realistic. If you could only write two violations this year, I think that's what I read, two violations, you weren't working real hard at it. It was a very, very low priority of the police department. Understandable. I understand why. I'm not naive. I understand how hard it is to, to get the burden of proof. But, come on. Yeah. <laughs> to not, I'm not to saying there aren't two, things it, that could be done <laughs> to make it. Uh, and I, well, again, I don't want to come across as being anti-police. I understand it's a, they don't want to arrest people for this either. Either people are having a good time in their backyard and all that, but I mean, it, this is hard on Dan, a lot of people. Dan, that was, sorry. Go ahead, Alan. No, the, the question I had was actually along those similar lines was Dan, in your research and in looking into this, I mean, it sounds like Sioux Falls and Des Moines, I mean, every major city throughout Iowa and Nebraska, South Dakota, they have similar ordinances. Did you look at all on their complaints and enforcement mechanisms? I mean, because obviously we know the number of complaints we had, we know the number of tickets we issued. Do, you have, do we have any of that from any other city? I, I do not, Alex. I don't know what their experience has okay. been. I can tell you, Alex. I just wonder. Yeah. I was going to say, Alex, I can tell you that uh, my oldest daughter lives in a suburb of Des Moines, and she said, even though it's prohibited down there, she said it was unbelievable, and you can see a pretty good fireworks yeah. display down there. So I'm not sure that that, even the enforcement and uh, having the law itself is... You know what I'd like to And see. that's where, yeah, I just wonder, wonder about the enforcement and what they're doing, how they're enforcing it, if they are issuing more tickets, you know, how we could leverage that or what that would look like. I also think this year was an anomaly. Um, I think that a lot of people were getting fed up and being cooped up. Um, I think that that had a big, played a big factor in it. But, no, I would just, I would just be curious of their complaints versus um, citations. It appears in 2019, Des Moines received 245 complaints, and a news article that I just pulled up indicated they had four times that many complaints through June of this year. So roughly 1,000 complaints. Where was that at? In Des Moines and the in surrounding suburbs. Thank you. Anyone want to be heard? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Remember, you have three minutes. Hi, my name is Randy Giles, 33676 South Ridge Road. Um, I know that it's a challenge to enforce it, but that really does, shouldn't stop us from doing something. Um, I, know, um, I love Mayor Scott's uh, suggestion. I don't know how that works out um, with the technical parts of it, but I just don't feel like, like that's a good enough reason for us to go tell are people that are being harmed by it just sorry we don't have a way to enforce it because there are going to be good citizens that are having fun right now setting off fireworks and they set them off between the correct times and if there was other restrictions such as like I think the um, the idea of limiting the potency of the of the fireworks is a great idea and they they there will be people who will follow the law so I just don't feel like I, I think it's a challenge and I think that um, Councilman Waters idea of checking with other cities and how they've dealt with that challenge is a good idea. Um, I'd be happy to help in any sort of way I can, but I just hope it doesn't deter us from 
the bigger picture, and that is by doing some type of ordinance around the fireworks and make it better than it is now. You know, you know I, I recall you were here a couple of weeks ago and, and you mentioned some of the same comments and, and the one that I thought was really appropriate was the fact that if there is a law, no matter what the law is, there are good people out there who, who will obey the law. Yeah. And so, uh, and I think you're absolutely right. I think that's the case here. And even though it was perfectly legal this year, and, and apparently from the accounts I've read, it's a profitable business. I think that um, the best thing, to, I, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that if we have a law that no matter if people may not believe uh, or would, would rather uh, discharge fireworks, but if we have one that bans it, or vice versa, I, I think people, there are more good people than bad people, and I think good people will obey the law. And I think that's an important part. So we just need to find out what that is yeah. and maybe impact so we can have a greater impact. I, I don't think there's a way to slow it down. I really don't. Right. And I, I, I'm, I don't want to be a pessimist, but, but I think uh, I, I saw it long enough to know that they'll access it and they'll do it and they'll have fun. And if it's done appropriately, then it works out pretty well. If it, when it's not, it's when it happens at one or two or three in the morning right. and it's these loud mortar style yep. Yep. fireworks, it really, it can really present a problem. And, and a lot of the reasons that uh, Dan listed in his uh, report, I think, are reasons why we need to uh, do something to make it more uh, palatable for people. And I... I don't know if the journalists say, I was wondering, one thought I had was, out there. Besides, uh, besides um, maybe you can help with just an informal survey. Would you like to see fireworks banned? Would you like to have them but lower the powder? Whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, I'd really like to know what the majority of people yeah. think. I don't. We're going to find uh, out. You're going to get a lot of emails this week. Well, I've, I've gotten a lot of emails so far. I are going to get more now. So but, but I mean... Fine. I'm not complaining. I'm just right, saying right. that's reality. Yeah, no, I, I, just, I just think uh, this is an issue that uh, really impacts a lot of people. And, uh, and if we have the majority of people who are interested in continuing to do this, then I think it's our responsibility to try to figure out a good way to go about it. And if... The majority don't want to do it, then then maybe that's the route we go. But it won't solve that right. won't solve the yeah. problem. It'll well, it'll but, continue. But and and I mean, in Council Member Moore's idea of having a designated area. I mean, a anything helps. Anything. And I was uh, watching over the. There wasn't very many. In fact, I don't even know if there were any at all Mark, um, that had any opposing um, opinions that were posted to keep fireworks. Um, um, but there definitely was some that said to see if we could do something about it. So yeah. any, any way I can support, I think that's great that the council members are opening to, open to looking at it, researching it. And so thank you very much. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Solheim. I live at 2909 Garrison Avenue. As I recall, Benjamin Franklin said that a democracy was two wolves and a sheep deciding what was for dinner. Thomas Jefferson said that a democracy was nothing but mob rule. John Adams said that a democracy was nothing but 51% of the people trampling on the rights of the other 49. I guarantee you that the majority of people here in this city will say, let's have fireworks. But is that what we want to do to our veterans? They have rights. They deserve peace and quiet. They deserve to be able to live in their living rooms, have a quiet evening, and not have to take shelter in their basements. Now, there's something else that we have today that we didn't have in the past. You're talking about uh, 
How do you prove that something's going on? Well, I've got a cell phone, and it takes video. And I can take video of someone shooting off fireworks, and that certainly ought to be evidence. Uh, it would be. And we have 85,000, I bet you we have 85,000 phones in this city that are able to take video of people breaking the law. But I think the biggest problem you'll be faced with, I think there probably is video out there now, but I think the biggest problem you'll be faced with is the, is the fact that they live in their neighborhoods, they don't want to leave their neighborhoods, they like their neighborhoods, and they want to sing along, get along. And I don't blame them. You know, I live and I'm in not convinced that the majority of people are in support of. But I just like to hear more from the general public. I live in a neighborhood, as we all do, and I will not allow my neighborhood to go to the dogs. If I see someone breaking the law in my neighborhood, I'm going to stand up and say something about it. If not to them, I will call the police and I That's, will tell them that and, these guys are breaking the law. And that's the way it should be. And I have. Yep. I've had bonfires going in the backyards and I've called the, the dispatchers and they've sent the fire department to put those fires out. It's because it's what is good for our city. And I'm thinking that, uh, and I'm, I'm for a ban on fireworks because that is the right thing to do for our veterans. And, it's not, and I found out when calling the Veterans Association, veterans of VA hospitals and VA centers all across the state, Marshalltown, uh, Ames, Iowa, Des Moines, uh, Sioux City here. It's not just veterans with PTSD. It is any veteran that has seen combat. That shell goes off and they're hitting the dirt. And beyond that, it doesn't even have to be a veteran. I know a person, the, the guy in my back, behind my, lives behind me, was an, uh, an inspector for the government. And he was at a plant in North Dakota he was in a supposedly explosion-proof room. And while he was there inspecting, they had an explosion. And the window that he was sitting in front of blew out of its frame across the room and hit the wall behind him. And he relives that every time he hears the fireworks go off. Beyond that, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate thank you for taking this serious, and thank you for doing due diligence to this. I want to thank you all very, very much. And have a good You're evening. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Greg Giles, 33676 South Ridge Road, 51108. Um, I don't pretend to be a pyrotechnician but I do have fairly extensive experience uh, lighting off fireworks as a child and, and through my youth and misspent youth. And I can tell you that there actually is a way of reducing the, the black powder content. When I was a kid, you would go to South Sioux City to Nebraska where they only had one inch firecrackers were allowed. They're much smaller pop sound. Whereas if you wanted the big bang, the inch and a half firecrackers, you went to South Dakota. And of course, Iowa was completely illegal. So you would go on the 4th of July, you would wheedle with your parents to take you to North Sioux to Lantis fireworks to blow them off. But if you couldn't get, the, get them to go there, they'd take you to South Sioux where you could get the little lady fingers. I think they're still manufactured. You'd have to, I don't know, I haven't done any research on it, but they're much less loud pop, popping sound. And for many, many years, that's all you could get in Nebraska before we became a, a firework state. So a lot of the stuff I suspect is, I don't know if it's commercial grade or what, but we live out in the country and my God, there were a lot of loud, loud booms going off for about 10 days prior to the 4th, including well past the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. So regarding people disregarding the law, that is, that's very true, but if you only had it, in, it was enforceable on the third and fourth, which is what the law says, uh, if people were, I don't know, I, I, I don't have much more to say than that, but if, if enforcement is the key, and, and I applaud the efforts of the police, if they would, if they could round up the scoff laws. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Nick Korleski. I stay at 500 Prescott, 51103. I'm here to, I'm here to talk on a couple different things. Is this been, we're on fireworks right now. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Just sorry. wait till we make sure everybody's done with fireworks. Okay. Anyone else on fireworks? Okay. Citizen concerns. Now you can come up. All right. I was here last week. And first thing I want to point out is that that police officer sat here and, and said to you guys that the reason that they didn't go see what was going on with that domestic abuse was because it came in at, at shift change. I mean, that's the, that is the worst excuse I could possibly hear about a woman being beaten and they didn't go check on her was because they was ready to get off of their eight, their eight hour shift. And I think you guys should probably really look into that because that is, that was, and, then, and we just sat here and nobody said anything else about that. That was, that was pretty crazy. I'm pretty sure you guys got daughters or sisters or something, something that you got to ha have some type of remorse for women now. So you guys got to look into that. That was insane. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is this oversight committee that got brought up last week and the people that were going to be, be sitting down in, in charge of this oversight committee. Now, from what I heard last week, the oversight committee is that they're going to be putting people in positions that they can and already do control like puppets. The NAACP and the UD in the community are people they're already in cahoots with. When I confronted Rex Muter about my incident at the police department, Ike Rayford was standing right next with him on the top steps. The very next day, Ike Rayford and Monique Scarlett both messaged me on Facebook, the same two people that have weekly sit-downs with Rex Mueller. Do you think that just so happens to be a coincidence or more like the puppets that I just spoke about being put in place? So I have a sit-down with Ike and Monique, tell them my story, show them a video, and a week later, they have their so-called task force set up. The exact same task force that they've been trying to set up for years now. There's starting to be a lot of coincidences, you ask me. That was two months ago. I haven't heard anything else since from, Mon from Monique Scarlett since then. Then she saw me in here last week and had the audacity to come up to me and tell me she's still on my side. Well, then we had a meeting set up where a select group of people were there. Ike Rayford happened to be one there. The main discussion at this meeting was putting my photos up on bulletin boards around town. Within days, the thank you law enforcement signs were put up all over Sioux City. Another coincidence. Now, <laughs> I've got so many different things that we can talk on here. Let's, I mean, now, a couple weeks ago, you guys were talking about, about the money for the, for the cameras. It's going to be $260,000 for cameras. You guys, the first thing you guys said was, we can't get grants for these cameras. And you guys, it sounded like you guys were trying to knock the cameras. We can't get any loans for the cameras. You guys are going to be paying for the cameras. Well, how, do, how come we can, it's odd we can get $36,000 for, for vests for these police officers. And then from my understanding, anything over the $36,000 is to be, the remaining balance is to be paid, is to be paid by the city. So we're, our, the taxpayers are going to pay for the rest of the, the police vest that the $36,000 doesn't count. Now, I, I got a suggestion. Why don't we take that $36,000? I'm a carpenter. I, I, pay for, I pay for my tools. Everybody I work with, they pay for their tools. So why don't we take that $36,000 and put that towards them cameras that's going to cost $260,000 and have the, the police officers buy their own, buy their own vests, you, you need buy to, their own You boots. need to wrap it up. Okay, well, that, that's all I need to say. I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll right. come back next week, and I'll, I'll, I'll continue from there. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just address your deal. It, 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 there's union contracts, and we're required to furnish vests. That's the reason we furnish vests. We already told you we have the money for the cameras. We took it out of the camera funds from speeders and from people that run red lights. We didn't say we were looking for the money. We said we had it already appropriated, and that's how we were paying for it. I don't know how you misunderstood that, but I don't that's know if I said maybe I, I had it written, I had stuff written down to say, but I just was spoken freely, but. I don't know if I said something about you guys were looking for the two six. I, I don't think I said anything about that. I, don't, I said that the thirty six thousand dollars for the vest, and then anything over. But you the said take that thirty six because you don't have money for cameras. We I'm already sorry, have. I'm them. sorry, I was probably rambling. I didn't, I didn't read what we I already had the I money to say for the thirty six thousand dollars for the vest, and then anything over the thirty six thousand dollars, the city is to pay the, the rest, the remainder of that to offset the cost for the police. All That's right. what it said. That's what I seen in the newspaper. So I mean, I, maybe I read the newspaper wrong, but that's exactly what it said. Thirty-six thousand dollar grant, and then anything over that would be, would be right. paid for by the city. All right. Now I didn't say anything about the two sixty. We're trying to find two sixty. I heard you say that that was coming from the from the from the 
the speeding lights and the stoplights. I heard you say that, and I, I totally understand it, and I agree. That's where it probably should come from. All right. All right, thank you. Anyone else? My name is Mark Soul. I'm going to live at 2909 Garrison Avenue. And I just wanted to again say thank you. I brought up a concern at a moment just like this several weeks ago. And you, the city council, listened to that concern and thought it had merit. And this is how our republic works. This is government. And I want to thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Anyone else? Council Alex. Alex. Alex, you got anything? Yeah. No, no, sorry. I didn't hear you say my name. I'm good. Thank you. Pete? No. Dan? Nothing further, Mayor. Move, we adjourn. Second. Waters? Aye. Redkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. Scott? Aye.